The Damron and Torr classifications describe fractures that occur at the proximal aspect of the fifth metatarsal. Damron divides the base into three anatomical zones. The first zone is the most proximal aspect of the tuberosity or styloid process. Zone 2 is a distal aspect of the tuberosity and zone 3 is the most proximal aspect of the diaphysis or shaft. In zone 1, I would say the two most important anatomical structures you need to know are the peronis brevis and the lateral band of the plantar aponeurosis, both which attach here. And if either one of the two is pulled, it can cause an avulsion fracture. The mechanism of injury is, a foot is in a plantar flex position and is everted forcefully. These tend to be extra-articular and non-displaced, but they can also be intra-articular, in which case the cuboidal metatarsal articulation is disrupted. Fractures in zone 2 are often known as a Jones fracture, and these occur at the level of the intermetatarsal articulation. The fracture line begins at the lateral cortex and travels medially in either a transverse or oblique fashion, and these may or may not be intra-articular. These occur most times about 1.5 centimeters distal to the cuboidal metatarsal joint surface. The issue with the joint fracture is that these occur in a watershed area, and watershed means there's poor vascular supply to this area. The issue with that is it makes a healing time longer and more complicated. It's complications such as a delayed union or a non-union. When you think about fractures in zone 3, you're thinking about stress fractures. These also can occur in the watershed area and these tend to be just a little distal to a Jones fracture. And these often occur in athletes that have to pivot and move side to side very quickly. So think about sports like tennis, football, baseball, or basketball. Or classified fractures in zones 2 and 3 based off the radiographic findings to help determine the prognosis and the treatment. A type 1 will have the best prognosis and often require only conservative measures, whereas types 2 and 3 will often require surgical intervention. So these apply to the Jones fracture, which I forgot to mention, occur at the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction and the stress fractures. A torque type 1 fracture has sharp margins. There are no periosteal reactions, no medullary sclerosis, and minimal cortical hypertrophy. A type 2 is essentially a delayed union. On radiograph, you will see that oftentimes both cortices are affected. There is periosteal reaction, and surrounding the fracture line is an area of radiolucency, which represents bone resorption. A type 3 is really just a non-union. You will see on x-ray sclerotic fracture margins and complete obliteration of the medullary canal.